Tonight, the gods would fly above us. Mathematics and orbital calculations predicted their trajectory within the second and meter. Above exactly this spot, Talon would soar far, far above, beyond the clouds, lit up by starlight and the reflection of the distant sun, still shining upon his fortress. The scale of the flying fortress was truly immense. Even with the naked eye, we could see the structure, flying high enough in orbit of the world that the sun would shine on the metal structure unobstructed, making his fortress look like a glowing white spot in the darkness. I'd heard and read that the effect was like what lit up the moon, the only other celestial object. T minus three minutes. The comms pinged. Scavengers huddled around two lines of power cells, kept upright in the snow a good distance from the resting airspeeder. Many knelt in reverence, some holding out different trinkets, beads, sigils, and rope figures, depending on family traditions. Some rubbed their hands occasionally with a rhythmic clap. Others bowed low a few times, repeating mantras under muted mics. Some held hands with their neighbors and simply looked to the night sky. They had dedicated one comm channel to songs. It had been two weeks since I'd crawled out of the underground and back to the surface. I'd spent most of my time half asleep on a bed, and the other half talking mad scrap shit with Teed or playing games of cards. They kept me on painkillers for only a few days and then weaned me off of them. Those were the worst days of my life. Pain was almost always a constant, especially during the sponge baths. The food was equally terrible, mostly frost bloom wrapped around ration bars, and the water had that telltale metallic tint of freshly boiled snowdrift taken straight from the white wastes. That was all unavoidable, of course. Most of the crew had thought we would return straight away to the colony. They hadn't expected the expedition to be extended, so the food rations had been limited. The morning after I'd escaped the underground, Lord Atius had dialed in a new set of coordinates, the ones Suya had given us deep in that bunker, though to the rest of the crew it was simply deathless being deathless.